Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for another privilege of coming together to study your word. We thank you because of this gift of the word you have given us and your spirit always available abiding to teach us your very mind. We are praying, O oh Lord, that these good things you have given us will never be taken away from us in Jesus' name. And we pray that tonight you will break the bread of life to everyone and you make us strong as we take this bread of life in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that this word will act like water, cleansing and purifying us, and will be clean in your sight in Jesus' name. And we pray that it will shine forth as light in our pathway so that as we find ourselves in the crossroads of life we will know the right way to take in jesus name strengthen us and keep us faithful and loyal till the final day in jesus name we pray our study today is in Hebrews chapter 12, reading from verses 1 through to 4. Please open your Bible as we read together. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Niturina, be at if you are war summer, Tio Kutobayi, for a well lady, you waka, a jacky apa, oh, we, the work will go to see a packer, a tear set your own latte de mawa, Casima, the Suru, Sire, Jetty, I break I what you are. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood striving against sin. As we come to the beginning of chapter 12, already you have the studies in chapter 11 behind us. You will see that the beginning of chapter 12 is looking back and linking us back to chapter 11. In the one beginning, the chapter wherefore makes us to look back, it says, because of all these things that we have studied, wherefore all these things are now leading us to another thing. He's telling us not to forget the examples and the, uh, the, the lessons of faith we have learned through the lives of the people that have run the race before us. And we should be reading over again chapter 11 and studying it over and over so that the faith life of of the men and the women mentioned in that chapter will revitalize our own faith and increase our own faith in the Lord. Ki asima kweko 
ako jile ni pa ejaye igbagbo awon okunrin ati awon obirin ti amenuba ninu ori na lati le fun igbagbo wa lokun si ninu oluwa you will see that in the verses we have read is given encouragement wa ri pe ninu awon ese ti a ti kayi o fun ani oro e mo lotan le gives that encouragement in the form of a imperative and commandment ni ona ti o n gba fun wa ni ona ni oro iyanju yi o n so gege bi igba to n pa lase fun wa and he brings this commandment to everyone young and old in the family of god gbogbo awon to wa ninu e bi olorun omode ati agba ni o si fun ni e oro lotan le he brings that encouragement and exhortation to the preachers and the people that are listening to the You will see in the middle of verse one. It says, "Let us," and then he gives the instruction. He includes himself because he himself was still running the race. And then he says, "Let us once again in verse twelve, sorry, in verse one, chapter twelve, let us run with patience the race that is set before us." Let us lay aside as something to lay aside, and then let us run. There is a race to run. Oni eje ki afin kaka se gekan awon kaka wa ti anla ti pati se gekan ki ato wa masa ere jena. And then in verse two is telling us about where we look and who we look unto. Ni ase eke jilo wa so ibita o tejuma atenta o ma wunebe. Actually, there are three aspects of looking. It tells us from verses one to four. Ni awo ihameta we wo lo so from anla ti ase eke ni si ase. Number one. There is a looking back. It's not looking back like Lord's wife. It's looking back at the cloud of witnesses we have been given in chapter eleven. He is a real boju we yeti aya Lord is suba. Ki a boju we yeti a wa wa a wa leri wa niti a wa wa niya sorry. He says we are not the only people running the race. Some people have run before us, and I've given you so many of those examples in chapter eleven. Look back at them and be encouraged by what they have done. We are foreseen. We also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. As we look back at them and we see their exploits of faith, let us lay aside every hindrance and let us run on. Oh, so for why we are one? We can't come near. We can't say we're not enough. Ati fun wa ni apere awon eniyan bi ti wa ti won ti sa ere ije yi sa jo wa o si so ni pa orisirisi awon eyan won yi o wa ni ni bayi e je ki a wu apere won ka wo ipe ni ja won nigba ti a ba ti wa ri won awon eleri ti o ku to bayi ki a wa pa ohun ide won ti sa gba kan ki a le sa ere ije ti wa na so then number 1 there is a looking back at the great cloud of witnesses number 2 there is looking up To Jesus. A koko ni no re ni sini pe ke a boju wen yi wa wa le ri ti oku to ba wa yi e ke ji wa ni pe ke a wa wo ju boju so ke ke a wo Jesus. He is seated at the right hand of God. He is seated on the throne of God. He is up in heaven. Look up. O ti joko ni a wa tu iti a la wo lo ke a wo lo ke ten te la wo wa e wa boju so ke ke ma wo. As you look back and as you look up, then you look forward. Gaga bi o ti wa boju wen yi to wo ke ba yi wa tu wa te juma. Because he himself, Jesus Christ, he was looking forward to the joy, to the crown, to the reward that was set before him. Nitori aniti a wo ti aniki a wo ti se Jesu funarare, o funarare, o tejuma ayo. And in the same way, you should be looking forward to the reward, to the joy, to the crown that is set before you as you are running the race. But can I know why you keep on now telling me why you let you go? Are you a day at your retreat? You are going to go to the race. The apostle uses the expression "running the race" for the Christian life a number of times. Or for a bani apostoli ilo bolo risi sa reje ifu ibi aye Christiani. And then he is using that same. Illustration here. It's an example we are all familiar with. There are people that run races in the world. Akere toto one lo fu one ni si si ibo bo one ni ama akere na bi ni ti mawo tori pe ari awo ya to say re je ni no aye. And if we're going to win, we must start. And we start at the new birth. When you are born again and you enter into the race, then you will you with determination will go on that you are going to win. Asin lati koko bere re je na ibo la si timbere ambere. 
Nigba ti aba bere pelu atun bi yi a o ni ipinu oko pe a o bori and then whatever you may find along the way o nko to le salaba pade loju ona na you always remember the lord jesus christ in ba gbogbo wa ma ran ti jesu oluwa that he has gone through much more than you can go through pe o hun ti la nto poju nti yo je riri ni ko so hold on to him as your perfect example gaga bi o se ndi mu gaga bi apere re ti o pe then you will not fail and you cannot fail you will not fall in jesus name Three parts we're going to look at in the study. Number one, encumbrances to run in the race. Number two, example of Christ our Redeemer. And number three, exhortation to the redeemed. And number one, we're looking at encumbrances to run in the race. And now you see, it tells us in verse one. It says, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses He's talking about the examples he has given us in chapter 11. Oh so ni pa awon apere ti o fi fun wa ninu ori kokan la. You see the Hebrew Hebrew Christians they were undergoing some difficulties. Awon Hebrew to gba gbo yi won la awon wa la kan koja. There were ridicules, there were persecutions, there were trials, there were afflictions coming their way and it had the tendency of discouraging them. Awon isoro alebusi ni so he said, don't you remember the examples we have learned from? The example of Abel. He believed in the Lord, but he was hated by Cain's brother. And the example of Enoch. He walked with the Lord, but then the majority of people around him were unbelievers. And the example of Noah. He believed in the Lord and he obeyed the Lord, and yet you know that the majority of people were opposed unto him. And the example of the faith of Abraham. He believed in the Lord, but not without difficulties and problems. And yet he hoped against hope he kept on believing the lord even with all those problems surrounding him the example of sarah that kept on believing the lord even though it appeared that uh, the blessing was going to pass her the faith of Isaac, the faith of Jacob, the faith of Joseph. And the faith of Moses. And then as he gave all these examples, he said, "Wherefore, now that we are compassed about, was so great a cloud of witnesses." They run the race. You are running the race now. The same God who helped them and the same faith they have, you can have, and that same God can help you. Only what is I read. But he said there is something that hinders people that will not allow them to run so well. He said, if you will look around you to the people that are running in any race, like those who are in athletics in the world, they will not have a great load on their back and then be competing with other people and running with other people. They will not wear a kind of garment that will be flowing and disturbing them and then say they are running in a race. They will not overeat and then be so fat that they cannot carry themselves and say they are running in a race. They will not wear such a heavy shoe, heavy boot, 
and with pebbles inside the boot so that their feet will be getting uncomfortable and say they are running in a race. And what on sale eje wa ki wa bata kotobi. Toto ma tobi tiko ni efi aye gbe se wan lati fu ye lati sare eje. Everything will be controlled in their lives so that they can run well. Gbogbo nkan ninu aye wan ni wan se ninu wan tun wan si ki wa ko le sare dara dara. And he was telling them as it is in the physical, as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. O wa so fun wa gba gba pe bi o ti ri nipa te da eniyan ti a nri loju gba gba be lo ri nipa te mi. That if we are going to run in this race and we are going to win, we must lay aside every way. O wa so wi pe ti a ba fe sare eje na ti a o si bori a lati pa ohun idi wo ti. That's one encumbrance, that is one hindrance that we are going to lay aside so we can run the race that is set before us. Awon kan idi wo won yi, awon kan yi ni a lati pa ti si egbe kan ki a ba le sare eje ti a gbe kai wa. And he says there is a second thing we need to lay aside. O ni o mi ran to wa ti a lati gbe se gbe kan. He said this one is personal. This one is very private. This one is peculiar to every individual. This one is not a common thing to everybody. Everyone has this private personal peculiar thing he must lay aside. And he said that this one is peculiar to everyone. Everyone has this private personal peculiar thing he must lay aside. And he said Personal, peculiar problem that I'm always having tendency and temptation to that can hinder me in running the race. <laughs> And he says when you have seen number one the weight and then number two the sin that does so easily be said, you will lay them aside and then you are ready to run. Oh, I saw you pay lack of what you're about to read and we do what you're ati awon ese ti o ronrun ti se ikeji ti o ronrun lati di mawa o wa ni gbogbo e wa wa pati se gbe kan what are these encumbrances ki ni awon won di won won yi as we look at the word of god the word of god describes to us the encumbrances bi a se nwo oro olorun oro olorun salare iye re ye kekeke fun wa in luke chapter 8 and verse 14 ninu luke ori kejo ese ikerin la we see the things that dissolve some other people and they are not able to run to perfection and they are not able to bear fruit on to perfection ari on ti o ti di awon kan lowo ele ti o je ki won le sa ere eje na ti won won le so eso pipe ninu aye won luke chapter 8 and verse 14 luke ori kejo ese ikerin la and that which fell among songs a day which when they have heard go forth and are choked with the cares and the riches and the pleasures of life and bring no fruit to perfection i want to your boss in where go lia one need that you want butter one law what's if he what's if he told you at your own at your own right here for pa we thank the Lord for those of us who are born again. But being born again is just starting to run the race. For us to win the crown, for us to get to the joy, for us to get to the final reward, we must run faithfully, we must run steadfastly, we must run loyally until the final end. Ki a ba a le de o kwe a yon an Ki a ba a le de biti a o ti gba e re nan Ni nou si sa e re e je nan A gbo do sa kwe lo ti nan But you see the danger for this generation of Christians O wa li e wuto mbe lo na wa Christian e ra yibi The cares of life A wa ni ya ye What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Ki la o je, ki la o mo How do we have shelter? Ba o la se ri le to ma How do we educate our children? Ba o la se to ma wa ni le we The cares of life can become so much that it can hinder our spiritual growth 
growth, our spiritual development, our spiritual progress. And the riches of life. And the pleasures of this life. And in the end of the world, when it is near the coming of the Lord, the pleasures of life will be a great hindrance, a great encumbrance for the people of the world. There are some things that are even legitimate and normal, which can become a great hindrance for somebody running a race. The example of those who are running a race in the world, you know that. If somebody is running a race in the world and he carries a briefcase with him, he will not be able to run that race. A briefcase in itself is not a sin, but for somebody running in a race, that briefcase can become a hindrance. You can look at Luke chapter 9 and in verse 259. And he said unto another, Follow me, but he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Taking care of our parents is a normal thing. If the father dies, we need to bury that father. That's a legitimate thing. But you see that thing can become a hindrance. You can be so tied and you can be so attached to your family that the consideration for your family becomes first in your mind and the kingdom of God becomes second and when the family becomes the priority and your spiritual life becomes number two thing that then becomes a hindrance in running the race in verse 60 Jesus said unto him let the dead bury their dead but go thou and preach the kingdom of God in Luke chapter 21 and in verse 34 he says take it to yourselves lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life and so that that day come upon you unawares you see there are some physical things that the body may even need that becomes exaggerated in our pursuit food is okay for the body if it becomes too much we become gluttons and we need to drink liquid into the body but when that thing becomes too much drunkenness can come in but you see there is a care of this life in this verse 34 and we need to watch now because in this period of time where we are living the cares of life can take quiet time away from us the cares of life can take prayer away from us 
the key of life can take the work of God away from our hands. The key of life can take even holiness, can take it away from us. And the pursuit of the legitimate things of life can become so pronounced in our lives that we will not care for our Christian lives anymore. And then we will not know little by little prayer is gone, Bible reading is gone, Bible study is gone, quiet time is gone, fellowship is gone, evangelism is gone, and then we are left shallow with, without any spiritual thing in our life anymore. The cares of life has taken away the spiritual value, treasure away from us. <laughs> In Second Timothy chapter two verse four. Timothy KG Ori K Jesai No man that worries entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. <laughs> I want you to understand what we are talking about. And we're not even talking about adultery. We're not talking about fornication. We're not talking about sins. We're talking about things that may look legitimate. Things that other people may be doing. Things that people will say, but what's wrong in this? What's bad in this? That you are a Christian, does that mean you will not even look at legitimate things in life? And these things that the people are saying, what's bad in this? What's wrong in this? They can become load. They can become weight. They can become hindrances and encumbrances upon our lives that will not be able to make spiritual progress. <laughs> And you know the accusations of other people who say they are born again. They say they are children of God. They are in another denomination. They are another. They are in another church, and they are telling you that you are taking this thing too far. There are legitimate things to deny yourself of. They will say we understand if you say adultery is not good. If you say fornication is not good, but the legitimate things of life that you should enjoy, that you surround yourself with, you are denying yourself of them unnecessarily. That's the way they think. You deny yourselves of them because you know they become hindrances, encumbrances in your life that will hinder you from running the race. And I want you to begin to think now. As you are busy to those other people who say they are Christians. And you began to reason with them. And you said, well, it is true. Why am I just denying myself of this, this, and this? And you began to allow those things into your life, the care of life the pleasures of life, the relationship with your family, much more intimacy with your own believing members of the family. Don't you see the effect on your life now? Your prayer life has been affected. Bible reading has been affected. Your love, your consecration, your commitment has been affected. Don't you see that if the water you had in the bucket that was full before, a little hole on the side of the bucket, little drop of water dropping out, dropping out, dropping out, more than Half of the water in the bucket has now gone, little by little. That's what we are talking about. <laughs> 
o ti bere si nipa lori aye re bayi nigba ti wo na bere si igba ro pe ah ah o da bi en pe mi na ti wa gba were mesi ni sisi yi mo tin koja aye mi die die mo tin seju nkan to lorun ti e bere lowo mi o wa bere si fi okan si afi aye ife aye ati irira aye ati awon adun ti won je ninu aye iwo na wa le je mi leri bayi wi pe die die bayi adura ti lo akoko da keje ti lo ori ofi olorun ti jo danu ta garawo mi to kun ni jo city se ori ofi olorun iho kekere ti lu legbe garawa na o de da bi en pe idaji ti lo ninu re bayi won to da bayi that's why it says no man that worries entangles himself with the affairs of this life idi ni ato bi so pe ko si anything jago ti fi o wa aye yi di ara re lo wo all those things to the people that are not thinking about heaven and they are not thinking about the crown and they are not thinking about eternal reward but you because you are thinking of running the race you will push all those things aside let us lay aside every way awon kan wa yi tin di ni lowo yi fi sile fun awon ti won o le ro nipa orun sugbon ni ti re to je pe eru orun lo gbo kan reka to je pe gbogbo ogba lo nwo ona fun ati bo ko iyawo nisinsin yi ti o ti ni iru ero be awon kan wa ni fi won sile ki o ba le se se fun lati sa ere eje na in hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 ebero ori keji la se we for seen we also a compass about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight nitori na bi ati fi awo sama ti o tun to bayi fun awon eleri yi wa ka e je ki a pa ohun ide wo gbogbo ti si apa kan you see if there is any weight you do not lay aside that single one you excuse that single one you permit that single one you say well i don't want to go too far i will manage this one god knows that i have left aside all the other weights that single one you let remain may become the stumbling block the encumbrance in your life that you will not be able to run the race to the very end ti awon won de wo kan ba wa ninu aye re ele ti o pa mora ti o ko fi sile ko ta danu ko ti segbe kan to ni motivity bile motivity onle eleyi o ti di bara ku tabi era ateje mi eleyi kekere to fa ye gba ninu aye re yen gan o ni o di ohun ede wo fun o ti o fi ni le sa ere je na and he said there's another thing to lay aside o tun ni on camera ti to wa ta pa ti segbe kan which does so easily be set off only at yes ti o ronrun lati di ma wa now you need to know yourself o ye ko mento je gan there are three things to consider number 1 o meta lo ye ko gbe igba ye wa you're going to be strong wa so gba olukuluku eniyan ni idanu ara re lo nikan lo lati pa ti se gbe he said it is a sin we do so easily be set on o lo na ni ese ti o ronrun lati di mo wa each one will examine his own life each one will look at his own weakness each one will know himself very well and say that this is my private personal peculiar problem that i'm always having tendency and temptation to that can hinder me in running the race <laughs> ti o mo ni idanu ara re pe eleyi ni ka re mi ni bi ti esi ti ma nfe yin mi jale ni eleyi ni ese ti o ma ndi mi lowo ti ki je kin sa ere ije and it says when you have seen number one the weight and then number two the sin that does so easily be said you will lay them aside and then you are ready to run o wa so yi pe la koko ti o ba ti ri awon ohun idi wo yen ati awon ese ti o ronrun ti se ikeji ti o ronrun lati di mo wa o wa ni gbogbo ewa wa pa ti segbe kan what are these encumbrances kini awon ohun idi wo won yi as we look at the word of god the word of god describes to us the encumbrances bi a se nwo oro olorun oro olorun salare iye re ye keke fun wa in luke chapter 8 and verse 14 ninu luke ori kejo ese ikerin la we see the things that deserve some other people and they are not able to run to perfection and they are not able to bear fruit Unto perfection. I re on to the day I walk on the wall. Ele to the king wall. Er, say re je na. Ti wo on le so e so kipe ni no aye wo. Luke chapter eight and verse fourteen. Luke ori ke jo ese ikeri la. And that which fell among songs a day, which when they have heard, go forth and a choked with the and bring no fruit to perfection. I want to bossing we go li a wo. Nigba ti wo gbota wo lo. 
It's your perfect example. In loving the church and the church. In persecution and the contradiction of sinners, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Christ is your perfect example. In dealing with your enemies, in relating reacting to your enemies, Christ is your perfect example. Example. And what, uh, what we're going to read now, we want to borrow it from the Old Testament. You apply it to Jesus Christ because we're looking at Jesus, a perfect example. In Judges chapter 7. Nino, I won't need that your Orike Judges chapter seven verse seventeen. O need that your Orike Jess a keta de Lobo. He said unto them, Look on me and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall ye do. O say for a pay a woman, Kia ye kiosi say, beg again. Si ki e si, ni gba ti mo ba de o kwen ibudo na, yo si se, bi e mi ba ti se, be e ni ki e yi ki o se. That's what Gideon told those 300 following after him. On ti Gideon ni sa fwa an wo adon ro, wa wa to te le ni. And this is what the Lord Jesus Christ told his own disciples. On ti Gideon so lu, as is sa fwa an wo me yi re ni. You con me and do likewise. On ye e wo mi o ke si ma se di mo ba ti se. Study the life of Jesus Christ. Ma ke koni pa e biya ye Jesus. Look at the pattern of the life of Jesus. Christ. Make sure that is your only example, your perfect if you are going to run the race, if you are going to run to the very end, number one, know thy God. Know the power of your God. Know the authority of your God. Know the fact that he that is able to save is able to keep you till the very end. Number two, know thy enemy. There there is a devil that does not want you to finish the race. There is a devil that wants to hinder you from finishing. Know thy enemy day and night is pursuing you and is planning to want to stop you and make you stop before you reach the end of the race. Number three now, know thyself. If you don't know yourself, you will not know that private, personal, peculiar thing, which is a sin that can easily touch you, easily grab you, easily make you fall. You just be you don't know yourself. You don't know your peculiarity and the sin that can easily bring you down. Know thyself. Oh, ni ma ese to nte li o gege bi igba to jiji ba nte le yon. Oh, ni ma ese to je kwe yon le di omu ba eko ma ba sa ere je na. You see, for the children of Israel, it was mamori. A wama Israel ini ti wanka ma koni. And they never knew, they never changed up. Wo o de ye, wo o wa de le yon. In the wilderness, any little thing that happened, they will mamor. Any little thing, they will mamor. Any little thing, they will mamor. For them, mamori was the sin that does so easily beset them. Ni nwa de ji. It was the loss of the flesh. Just seeing a woman, that was all. It will get him, it will get into him. He will forget his anointing. He will forget his calling. He will forget the purpose of his life. He will forget the power of God in him. He will begin to talk without any limit, without any break. Once he saw a woman for some sin, the sin that does so easily be said was the loss of the flesh. 
agbara olorun tin be ninu aye re agbagbe e idi tolorun se ran wa saye yo gbagbe re ko sa ti robere bayi ni a ma soro bi oro ibaka gbogbo agbara olorun wa si joda ninu aye re for peter it was self confidence ni ti petero ka ni igbekele ninu agbara he will not think about his weakness he will not think about leading upon the lord self confidence and self conceit i can do it i will die with you and jesus warned him you know yourself you should know your weakness your personal private peculiar weakness that if you don't take care you will soon fall ko mai ka re ti re ni gbogbo ogba lo ma nse bi okunrin pe o n dara awon loju bi ada nitori na gbogbo ogba ni ani mo le ku pelu re mo le bo jiya jesus de n kini lo yi pe ah o ma ra re ni o mai ka re re ni pe awon nkan wa yi yo di olowo ninu ireje na for some people it is discouragement awon lo mi idai afoni to any little sin any little problem any little discouragement discouragement will come ni ti won wa la kekere bayi tabi so nkan kan to ba sele bayi suru won o tan o de ni daya bo the devil knows them he knows that's a strong great tool he can use to bring them down and make them stop running the race discouragement esun si ma won da da bi e mo wo wi pe eleyin ni ibi ka re won ni gba ki gba to ba fe so won de du arin le irin se to ma nlo ni e for other people is a fear of man awon elomiran ti won ibero eniyan ti won don't know to say no to somebody oh my god it is so pay back of when they are so much afraid of everybody that anything anybody says their weakness their peculiarity is that fear of man that cannot say no when people tell them to do things that are wrong nigba ki igba ti oro ba sele laarin awon atelumiran iberu eniyan ya mu won ati so won di igbekun de bi wi pe won ni ni igboya lati so pe back of when na for some people their peculiarity is impatience anything they think of anything they desire i want to have it now i must have it now that impatience is the number one thing that the devil is using in their lives to make them stop in running the race awon elomiran ni ti won ai ni suru ni wa laaye won to je pe o nko ti a ba ti ri bayi to kan won ba sa ti fe lona ko na ni won yo fe da lati ni nkan na eleesi ni irin se ti satani nlo lati di won lowo ninu ireje na no thy god ma olorun re is mighty to say o lagbara lati gbala no thy enemy ma o ta re he has missed it he wants you to miss it o ti padanu orun o si fe ko padanu no thy self ma ra re if you know that peculiar thing you lay aside the sin that does so easily beset you to ba ti ma ra re to ma n to nje oni to sun mo bi ese yi ti o ronun lati di mo ma ti se gbe and then after you have laid aside all those things let us run with patience the race that is set before us leyin igba ti a ba ti gbe gbogbo eleesi apakan ki e si ma fi suru sa ereje ti a gbe kai waju wa and then now he calls us to look at the example of the lord jesus christ ni bayi wa npe wa pe ki a wa wo apere jesus oluwa that is also point number 2 example of christ our redeemer iyan lo mu wa lo si sori keji ti a pe ni apere christ olura pada wa it says in chapter 12 verse 2 looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross despising the shame and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of god ni ese keji oni ki a ma wo jesus olupile se ati alase pe igbagbo wa eni nitori ayo ti a gbe kai waju re ti o farada agbelebu lai ka itiju si ti o si joko ni owo otun ti olorun i told you that the hebrew the hebrew christians they were facing some trying situations mo so fun o sa ju pe awon christianity won je beru yi won doju ko wahala nla and the possibility of discouragement was there ona lati di kawo gbera tabi ki suru won tan o wa the possibility of giving in and surrendering was there ni ti pe ka kawo gbera ka ka ri so eleyi wa ni ona and the possibility of turning back not continue to follow the lord that possibility of backsliding was there she say say lati yiju seyin lati ma to luwa leyin mo ki won di apada seyin yen be lona won and here the writer now encourage them he said you need to run to the end see all that you have suffered you have been born again you have known the lord this is not the time to turn back don't look at these difficulties keep looking at jesus ni ni o nko we wa mu wa lokan le wi pe en lati sa ere je ike sa dopin ni 
e wo gbogbo wahala ti e ti farada e wo bi ti e tin ba bo ire eje yi ti e ba le ma wo wahala suru yin o tan sugbe ma wo yesu if you look unto jesus you can walk on the water ti o ba wo jesu o le rin lori omi you can overcome any problem o le bori wahala ki wahala you can be victorious in temptation o le se gbogbo gbo idan you can be courageous in battle o le ni ojin okan kin ninu you will keep running without getting tired o le ma tesi waju lati sare lai the secret of victory in your life is to keep on looking you look at him constantly you look at him with faith you look at him with consecration desiring to be conformed unto the, to the image of Christ that is the secret of living the victorious life he was telling them that if they were going to run the race and they were going to run to the very end they must be fully occupied with the example of Christ in all things and at all times he was telling them if you look at yourself too much you will not be able to run the race. The example of those who are running the race in the world, they don't look at their feet while they are running. They will not be looking at their fingers while they are running. They will not be looking at their belly while they are running. They will not be looking at themselves. They will keep the goal in front of them and they will be looking at the finishing line. It's that way they will be able to run without any discouragement. You see those who are running race in the world, they will not be looking at their colleagues. If they are looking at the people be, be, uh, beside them and the people behind them, they will not be able to run and get the price at the end of running the race. If you, are on, if you are running, you are running this Christian race, and you are looking at brother so and so, and you are looking at sister so and so, and you are saying, well, sister so and so, yes, she has backsliding, she brought me to the gospel, brother so and so, he was my father in the Lord, he has backsliding, he's no more running the race, uh, so and so, he was working for the Lord before, he's now concentrating on things of the world, uh, so and so. Uh, since he got married now is not as active as before if you are looking at them and you are not looking at Jesus you will not finish running the race <laughs> They do this and they do this and they do that if your family is looking at other families and you are judging what you should do by what they are doing you will not run this race to the end <laughs> If our church here, if we're looking at other churches and other denominations, look at what they're doing, look at what they're buying, look at what they're getting, and look at how they're making their own worship. If we're looking at them, we're going to lose sound doctrine, we're going to lose sanctification, we're going to lose the commitment and the consecration of staying with the word of God, will be saying about look at these other churches don't look at the other churches looking unto Jesus to ba je pe ijo ti wa pelu to ba je pe awon ijo tabi eleya meya miran ni ta la fe ma fi ara wa we pe ah e wu awon ijo to o e obi a tin se ijo sin won e je ka wa no da bi won ka ma se ijo sin wa bi ti won to ba je pe eleyi ni akole kan wa nisisi lati ma fara wa we ijo miran a o ni ile saire je wa de o pere jesus is a perfect example jesus ni apere Whatever men do, whatever men do not do, you keep looking unto Jesus, don't look at them. 
In John chapter 13 verse 15. John chapter 13 verse 15. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. In your prayer life is your perfect example. In your love, in your care is your perfect example. In your commitment to the will of the Father, He is your perfect example. In seeking for the laws and preaching the gospel to those who need the gospel, He is your perfect example. In loving the church and the sheep of his fold he is your perfect example during persecution and the contradiction of sinners the Pharisees and the Sadducees Christ is your perfect example in dealing with your enemies in relating reacting to your enemies Christ is your perfect example and what, uh, what we are going to read now we want to borrow it from the Old Testament you apply it to Jesus Christ because we are looking at Jesus a perfect example in Judges chapter 7 Judges chapter 7 verse 17 He said unto them Look on me and do likewise And behold when I come to the outside of the camp It shall be that as I do So shall ye do that's what Gideon told those 300 following after him and this is what the Lord Jesus Christ told his own disciples look on me and do likewise study the life of Jesus Christ look at the pattern of the life of Jesus Christ. Make sure that is your only example, your perfect example. He didn't backslide. He didn't depart and deviate from the will of his father. The cross was hard and difficult. He went on till the, fin the, the, the final the final time. He drank the whole cup. He had disappointments too. Judas Iscariot was one of the closest people to him. He was terribly disappointed. And yet, Christ will not fail God because of the betrayal of Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot, he was one of the closest people to And so keep on looking at Jesus Christ. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. And we are to follow his example very closely, very intimately and constantly. In first Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 21. For even here unto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. They said, He has left us an example. Every area of the Christian life, He has left us an example. That ye should follow His steps. If you will pray every morning like a preach, if you will hold on to the word of God like he held on to the word of his father if it is your will 
if it is your meat to do the will of God as it was his meat to do the will of his father if your always pray not my will but thy will be done O God if like he did having loved the son he loved them till the very end if you do that if you will come and seek and save the lost like he did if you will pray for your enemies like he prayed for his enemies father forgive them they know not what they do if you will commit your very life into the father's hand father into thy hands I commit my spirit if you will follow God if you will follow Christ in little things in big things in personal things in family things in everything in your life like Jesus Christ did you will not backslide in this first Peter chapter 2 verse 23 who when he was reviled he reviled not again and when he suffered he threatened not but he committed himself to him that judgeth righteously you see it is when we forget Christ and we take loss into our hands he did that to me I will know what to do to him then we forget the life of Christ that's when we backslide in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 looking unto Jesus the also on the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross and you see there are people now they don't think about the cross they don't think about temptation they don't think about trial they don't think about problem their Christianity does not allow the presence of any cross in their lives any little problem they have in the district any little problem they have with any member of the church that crosses their way then they leave the church because they do not know there is a place for cross in the Christian life <laughs> Oh, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, he despised the shame. There will be persecution. There will be opposition and criticism. You might even be ill treated by people. You might even suffer unjustly but you will not allow the ridicule or the mockery coming from the world to hinder you from moving until the very end when you will get your reward at last actually the anticipation of the glorious reward will sustain the believer in the hour of temptation and trial Jesus kept on looking at the joy that was set before him and now he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. On the basis of all this now we have the exhortation to the redeemed. Hebrews chapter 12 verses 3 and 4 For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. 
He said, consider him. Why are you considering him? So that you will not be surprised if any, anything similar to that happens to you. He endured contradiction of sinners against himself. There are some people, their Christian life cannot stand criticism. Once a leader in the church or a worker in the church or a member in the church mistakenly criticizes them, that's all, they cannot stand again. There are some Christian people they say they are Christians, they cannot stand correction. Even when there are things to correct, if you say anything, they say, Why did he talk to me like that? That's negative. If it is like that, I don't think I can remain a Christian again. I can't remain in the church again. If you know you do this, it's not right. You do that is not right. They cannot stand. They are not looking at Christ, but it says, you consider him who endured such contradictions of sinners against himself. Why are we considering Christ who endured such contradiction of sinners against himself? In verse three, lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. Yes, Every time that somebody find faults with you, consider Christ. Every time they criticize you, consider Christ. Every time they say something negative about you, don't think about what they said, consider Christ. Every time somebody told a lie against you, consider Christ. Whatever they say that the flesh will react to, whatever they say that pride within will react to, consider Christ. Maybe somebody even says you are not born again. And that pains you to your very heart, to the very marrow. And then you say, if they are talking like that, and they are even publicly saying that I'm not even born again, what am I doing here in this place? In John chapter 9, on verse 24, John chapter 9, verse 24, then again called they the man that was blind, and they said, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. They were talking about Christ. They say, you blind man, we thank God your eyes are opened. God can walk with anybody anytime. You just give glory to God. This Jesus that uh, you said open your eyes, we know him better than you know him. We know him to be a sinner. If they call Jesus Christ the perfect Son of God, the sinless Son of God, the holy Son of God, the spotless Son of God, if they call him sinner, how about you? If somebody says you are not born again, and then you want to backslide because of that, consider Jesus. So, Jesus Christ. And to Jeppe, on your Molor, Pipe, on your Molor, Mima, on your Molor, Tico, Nia, Secacanino, to Bajapa, Wale, Marquejasuni, and Lesser, 
nitori na ti anike ni ba pe oloruko koruko to wa fe tori yen ku onu ijobo olorun gba ti Jesu ro in Matthew chapter 10 no Matthew ori kewa verse 24 verse 25 ese ikerin le logun ati ikarun de logun the disciple is not above his master nor the servant above his lord ome yen ki ju oluko re lo it is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? <laughs> The Lord is telling us to endure whatever names they are calling us. Whatever lies they are telling against us. Uh, sometimes uh, somebody will talk to you about another Christian. Unfortunately, so the Christians of nowadays. Whatever people tell you outside, especially the backsliders, who you know that these are backsliders, they are not in the Lord, they tell you something about another believer you know in the church that by the grace of God is standing. The Christianity of today, we believe those backsliders outside talking about members of the church. Be very careful. Whatever people say against you, if you are looking unto the Lord, you will not fail. In Second Corinthians chapter four verse sixteen. For which cause we faint not. For though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Satan, your enemy is trying to use those people to discourage you. When you hear what they are saying about you, when you hear what they are thinking about you, he wants you to be so discouraged and so to be so disheartened that you will say, well, if that's the way they are talking about me, why am I doing my best? Why am I still running the race? That's what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to give up. Nigba to bangbo on ti wan son ni pare a ti a wan oru a lebu ti wan son ni pare Satan ni fe lo ele la ti musuru reta koma kwa To ba jek pe ba ni wan son ni pa mi Ki ni moton wan ni ni joba lano Ki ni moti ense la an ni wan Satan ni fe lo ele iko ma ba pari reje re ni But Paul the Apostle tells us